Sometimes, we will get situations where we need to calculate the angle between two forces, or two sides on an object in 3D space. In that case, using the dot product can be really helpful. So if we have two vectors with an angle, we can write the dot product like this. If you're trying to find the angle, we can write the equation like this to calculate the angle between the two sides. In another situation, we might need to find the components of a vector that is parallel and perpendicular to a line. The parallel component is sometimes shown like this, and it's referred to as the projection of a force. To find it, all we need to do is take the dot product between the force expressed in Cartesian form and the unit vector of the axis, or the side where the projection is supposed to be. If we need to find the perpendicular component, then we can use this equation to do it. It's just the Pythagorean theorem. Here, this is the magnitude of the force. This is the parallel component, and this is the perpendicular component. This will become much more clear with examples, but to do so, you should be able to express forces in Cartesian form and be able to write position vectors along with unit vectors. In the previous video, I go through this step by step, so if you need a refresh or you forgot, please check the description. Now let's move on to some examples and see how we can find angles, projections, and more. Let's take a look at this question where all we need to do is figure out the angle between the two sides of the triangular plate. We're going to do it using the dot product. So let's write down the equation to figure out an angle. So first, we need two position vectors for the two sides of the triangle. One from A to B and one from A to C. Let's write down the locations of points A, B, and C. Now we can write our position vector. Let's simplify. Next, a position vector from A to C. Now we need to find the magnitude of these position vectors. Next, we will take the dot product between the two position vectors. So all we're doing is multiplying I components by I components, J components by J components, and k components by k components. The result is a scalar value. Now all that is left is to plug everything into our equation. Solving gives us our answer. Let's take a look at this question involving projections. We need to figure out the magnitudes of the projected components of the force along cables AB and AC. When we have questions asking for projections, we need to find unit vectors. So in this problem, we need a unit vector for cable AB and cable AC. So let's start by writing down the locations of each point. So we have points A, B, and C. Next, we need a position vector from A to B and A to C. Now we can find the magnitude. Okay, so finally, we can divide each component in our position vector by the magnitude, and we get our unit vectors. We're now ready to do the dot product. First, the projection of force F onto cable AB. For that, all we need to do is take the dot product between force F and the unit vector AB. Remember, force F has to be expressed in Cartesian form, and since the question already gives it in Cartesian form, we can just take the dot product. Since we're asked for the magnitude, remember it'll be positive. The negative sign means that our components points in the opposite direction to the unit vector. Next, the projection of force F onto cable AC. Those are our answers. Let's take a look at this problem, where we need to find the projected component of the 600 Newton force along rod AC. Unlike the previous question, our force isn't given in Cartesian form, so we need to express it as such. After that, we need a unit vector for rod AC. So to do all this, we first need to write down the locations of all the points of interest. First, point A. Next, we need to figure out point B. The question says point B is at the midpoint of rod AC. So the x component would be 1.5 meters in the negative x direction. The y component would be 2 meters, and the z component would also be 2 meters. We're just dividing the distances by 2. Next, we have point C and D. To express the 600 Newton force in Cartesian form, we need a position vector from B to D. Now we need the magnitude of this vector. Next step is to divide each component in our position vector by the magnitude, which gives us our unit vector. We just multiply the magnitude of the force by the unit vector, and that is our force expressed in Cartesian form. Now we need a unit vector for rod AC. The process is pretty much the same. 
First, a position vector from A to C. Now the magnitude. And lastly, the unit vector. Let's write it in decimal form. Now all that's left is to take the dot product between the force and the unit vector. Solving this gives us the component of the force that is along rod AC. Now we need the perpendicular component. For that, we use this equation. So F is the magnitude of our force, so it's 600 newtons. The parallel component is what we just found, so now we can solve for the perpendicular component. Those are our answers. That should cover the types of problems you will face when it comes to dot products and forces. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.